Welcome back. Today I want to look at Q99 generators. Specifically, what you can do to recover one of these when it's clogged up. These were used in the quick lights, 327, 427. They were used in the CQ, BQ, and PQ lamps of, of the 1920s and into the 30s. I talked about these in our theory of operation video. They were invented because this loop, or the, the design of them, is so that this loop allows you to preheat it with two matches. Remember, these were before the days of the instant light lanterns. Um, so you just had a free flow of fuel once you open the valve, so you need to preheat first. These allow preheating with two matches. They light up beautifully. But because there's a loop, uh, there's no cleaning rod or cleaning pricker. So the disadvantage with these is if they do throw a bit of carbon or if they do clog up in the tip, you've got to turn the lantern off, let it cool down, unscrew this, take it out, and use a cleaning tool with a needle to poke it from the outside. These work beautifully. When these are installed, the lanterns sip fuel. They put out a nice steady light, um, but there is no way to clean them. And of course, given that this is almost a century old, it came out of an early 20s BQ, um, it's got carbon in there. Now, when I first got it, uh, it, it would barely pass any fuel. Since then, I've heated and quenched it several times that frees up the carbon. Uh, my recommendation is if you've got one of these and it's not working well, do that first. Take a propane torch, heat it until it's just beginning to glow, and then quench it in cold water. Take the tip off first, I should add. Um, heat and quench several times. Blow some water through it until you no longer see bits of carbon coming out of it. That's a, that'll give you a, a pretty clean generator. I've done that with this. It's still not as bright as it should be. So I've been asked to make a video showing how to, how to take these apart and repack them. Now, before we begin, if we're doing more than heating and quenching, if we're going to be pulling the inside out, you need to be aware uh, these Q99s are packed with some kind of asbestos. Um, some of them, the very early ones, have a steel rod inside. Uh, if that's the case, and if they're really badly clogged, you'll just have to buy a new one. I've tried to disassemble those and remove that rod, and I... It's, it seems to be impossible. But as long as that's not the case, you can remove the asbestos from these. Uh, some people have said they've had good luck with an air hose and just uh, blasting air from the top and it'll shoot out the bottom once you've heated and quenched it a few times. Um, I don't have that sort of a setup, so uh, I also want to be able to clean this out to boil it in some citric acid and then use a brush to brush it out. And I can't do that when it's in this bent state. You can't get a brush through the loop. So I'm going to uh, remove the packing. And at that point, when you remove the packing, because it's asbestos, it's a good idea to take some precautions. You might want to wear gloves. You might want to wear a respirator. Uh, the key is to make sure that the asbestos remains wet so that uh, you don't get fibers in the air. Uh, but take, take appropriate precautions when working with asbestos. So the first thing I'm going to do with this is remove the tip. Set that aside. It's very small. I'll add, if the tip is bad, this has a 0 .008 inches, an eight thousandths of an inch uh, fuel jet in it. That's the same as a 220. So you can replace this jet with a jet from a common 220 generator if you need to. So begin with heating and quenching with a propane torch. If you've got fuel in there, you may get some flame just like that for a bit. Sometimes what's in there may uh, may burn. Uh, what this will do, if you haven't done it already, is it'll help loosen up by burning the carbon inside. It'll help loosen up the packing so it comes out more easily. But because we're going to straighten this out, this will also help us uh, by uh, heating and quenching, we'll soften the brass. I've never had one of these snap in half, um, but this will definitely make sure that doesn't happen.
that in the water. All right, now, this is the part that may be intimidating, but um, I've done this several times. Uh, just go for it, just be gentle. And just gradually work it open. The brass is soft. around so you don't bend one spot too much. Almost there. Getting there. Stop every once in a while, take your hands off and see where you may need to do a little bit more. Rotate it occasionally to, so you're working in all three dimensions. All right, that should be good enough. Now, because that packing's too far up to grab with needle nose pliers, if you're lucky, one time I was able to do that, if you can find a wire, you may need to keep working on straightening this out, but there comes the packing there. You want it good and wet. This is simply a piece of coat hang metal coat hanger wire. Um, you may have to experiment with several different coat hanger wires before you find one that's the right size. Um, but there's the packing. That's pretty carboned up, which explains why I'm getting such poor fuel output. So I'm going to set that aside while it's wet. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, note there is a wire inside there. Uh, so. One other thing I've done, when I wasn't able to get that out this way, it wouldn't push out. Um, I stuck this wire in my bench vise, put the top of the generator in the chuck of my drill, and then while spinning it, gradually, slowly, and with very, very gentle pressure, worked the generator down over the, uh, the wire, and it chewed it up, and then I was able to flush it out with water. That's another option if you can't get that out. This came out more easily than I expected it would. Um, but there are a couple different things you can do to get that out. So at this point, what we want to do is clean inside now. So I'm going to take that into the house, put it on the stove, and uh, I'll meet you there in a moment. All right, here we go. I've got the generator on the stove in a pan. That's approximately a liter of water, just enough to submerge the generator. And there's about a half a teaspoon of citric acid powder in there. We'll let this come to a boil and then I'll let it sit in there for about 10, 15 minutes and check on it. All right, we're back. It's been about 15 minutes. You'll notice that the color of the brass has changed. The citric acid removes tarnish really well. Um, so that's gone, but it also cuts through the carbon and, and all of that. It cleans it well. And that's been getting inside and cleaning the inside out too. So we'll take this out through the tip in there as well. Take this to the sink. All right, the first thing we want to do is flush all of that acid out of here. It is corrosive. While I'm at it, I'm going to take some steel wool and polish this up so it looks pretty when we're done. It won't stay that way for very long, but it'll look good to start with. The nut here is is steel and the citric acid will also remove any rust that's on there. So 
want to flush out the, the tip as well. Now, to get to the inside, you want a, some little round brushes like this. I think I got these on Amazon for about $3. Uh, they work very well. Just work that. And you can see the, the black that comes out. Work this in and out until the water that comes out is clear. Now the top will require a narrower brush. One of the other reasons to do this is to make sure there's no packing left in there. I just saw a little clump of packing fall out. Alright. That'll do it. Draw, dry these off. some water out of there. We'll head back to the workbench. All right, so the generator, the old one, is clean. I've got another Q99 here that we can use for reference. Now, if you don't have one to use for reference, uh, my suggestion is before you take the bins out of this, lay it down on a piece of paper and trace out the shape. Again, when we bend it, it doesn't have to be exact, uh, but you'll want it close. So, we need to, to replace the, the packing that was in here. Now, I looked at, while we were boiling this out, I looked at the original packing, and I think it could be reused if we just burned off the carbon, but I'd rather get rid of that asbestos. We're going to use this. This is a Zippo lighter wick. It's about 10 centimeters long. Um, I picked this up at a local tobacconist. They're about, oh, I think a toonie, $2. Uh, if you're in the States, you can probably get them for a little less than that. Uh, but this is, this is pretty much perfect for what we're doing, and I found them to work very well in these. Uh, some people use fiberglass strands from like a tiki torch wick or, or that sort of thing. Um, those work well as, as, as well. I uh, haven't tried it. Zippo wicks are nice and easy. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how far we need to pull this up inside. So in the end, we want this wick mostly sitting in the loop. So that means that if it's 10 centimeters long, we need to pull it up about that far. So that looks like about six centimeters. Yeah, six centimeters should do it. So we wanna pull it up a total of 16 centimeters. And I'm gonna use dental floss to do this. Uh, you can use fishing line. I've actually found dental floss works easier. I'm going to crease this, put a bit of a twist in it, and before I slide it into the tube, I'm going to lay that down, and I'm going to mark out some red ink, 16 centimeters. feed this through. Now, before you do this, blow through the tube a bunch. Make sure it's as dry as it can be so nothing hangs up. And this will slide right through. There we go. Now, separate those strands. I've got just a little bit of a hook on the top of that Zippo wick. We'll hook that. Pinch it together, and we'll pull this inside. Okay, so 16 centimeters. 
Need my ruler again. All right, that's where we want it. Now, the one thing with dental floss is I can't just pull one strand out. So at this point, I'm going to take another wire. And, yep, and that's about right. I'm going to hold the Zippo wick in place with the wire while I pull the one of the strands of dental floss out. Now, to double check, I can also use this wire. Okay. If you're not sure, if it gets moved around, it's in there now. So the other thing we can do, that's six centimeters. We need it, know it needs to go up that far. We can just push that back in. Double check. Yeah, that's just right. Okay, so our wick is in there now. Uh, you can see various ways of doing it. Thread pulls out more easily. Fishing line sometimes pours out, pulls out more easily. Sometimes it doesn't. I found dental floss seems to work best, and if it moves while it's in there, you can you can poke it around with the wire, and also use this to measure from the top and the bottom to make sure you've got it where you want it. So, now, we need to put the bend in. First thing I'm going to do, put these right next to each other. I'm just going to mark. I think there's about where the middle of the loop should be. And now we're going to switch over to my vise. All right, here we go. What I've got in the vise is a half inch socket extension. Uh, these work really nice. I've got a short one in here so that I can pinch the, uh, the square part in the, the jaws of the vise that holds it in place. And uh, you'll probably need to check your sockets. Yours may be different than mine, but this is almost exactly the right diameter for the loop in that, in that generator. Um, you can see I take the old one. This actually fit through the loop of the one I've just taken apart. This one not quite, but it's very close. So that'll do. So I'll keep this here for reference. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start bending this by hand just to get it started. So I know where I've got my starting bend. Take that back just a bit. Again, these don't have to be exact. If you bend it around the socket, if you use your hands, you're more likely to end up flattening out the tube. Get in there, we need to. Go slowly. Keep comparing it to the original. Need to bend this back just a bit. So keep going until you've got a, a U in there. And that a little bit too much. Go back there. And a little closer there. It's 
So my problem here is I bent it too far out at that point. Let's get closer. All right, so we've got the first bend in there. So now what we need to do, this is the, that was the hard part. Now, we need to just do the rest. And that's the easy part. A little bit of a torque on it so that they kind of go in a straight line. And we'll see if that fits. I think that'll be about right. So now we're ready to put that tip back on. Don't over tighten it, they're brass, they will break. I've done better, but this will do. Now let's fit it on that, on that uh, lamp. All right, now here's the lamp. Here's the generator. Just slip it up inside here and it drops right down in, so we've got it perfect. Screw this nut down. It's got a 5 16 inch square head on it. We'll tighten that. When you tighten these, if you've already got mantles on the, on the lamp, you might want to put your thumb against the, the loop just so it doesn't rotate and uh, tear one of your mantles off. Now, Go ahead and pump this up. And we're ready to light. You need two matches. Put them together like so. them under there. It's about 15 seconds. And hold them under there until it's just about to burn your fingers. So this should be fine now. And there we go. Final touch, we'll put the shade on. So there you go, that's how to rebuild a Q99 generator. Next time, don't throw it away, don't buy a new one unless you have to. You can replace the packing, it's not that difficult. See you next time.